right, chapter 18, problem number three. So um, let me read the problem. It says, given the average density of interstellar matter, um, stated in section 18.1, calculate how large a volume of space um, the space would have to ha have to be compressed um, to to make one cubic to make a cubic meter of gas equal to the density of of um, the air in the on, on the Earth. All right, and so the basic idea is this. Okay, so you you have this huge volume of space. Let me draw a little quick little picture. Okay, so you have this huge volume of space, and what we're trying to do is we're we're reducing that. Um, by how much, right? So, so, you know, like the walls of this box are closing in. Um, and, and really, so, so the basic idea is this. The mass stays the same, right? We're, what we're going to do is we're going to reduce it um, to the point where, uh, where the density, you know, what, what, at what point would, would the, uh, would the, um, the, the 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 volume the new volume which 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 we're, we're going to call v2 um, I'm sorry v1 uh, what what would that be in order to get the uh, the density equal to the density on on, on the earth of, of one cubic of one cubic uh, uh, meter all right so 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 this is the basic idea right this is like a little problem in physics that um, is often done with gases. All right, so um, remember, mass is volume times density. So, um, so we, you know, we can change those two. Like, if we called volume two the what they gave us, the you know, one cubic meter, and then of course the density of the of the air on the Earth is a one point two kilograms per cubic meter, um, and then of course the density of of uh, of interstellar. Uh, um, space is about 1.7 times 10 to the minus 24th uh, kilograms per cubic meter. So, so, so when we set these two equal to each other and solve for V1, right, what's, what's going to be that new compressed volume? Um, so, so we put all the numbers in, right? Remember, v, V2 was given to us as one cubic centimeter and, um, sorry, one cubic meter, and then uh, density two is the density of the air on the Earth, which turns out to be 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter. Um, and then, of course, we take the density of, of, of the, you know, the, the density of space, um, of interstellar space, as 1.7 times 10 to the minus 24th um, kilograms per cubic meter. Notice the kilograms per cubic meter cancel in the numerator and the denominator. And so when you do this, the volume V1, which is what we're trying to solve for, is equal to, let me look at my calculator here, uh, I get 7 point, like 058, but here I'm just going to round it to 7.1 times 10 to the 23rd. 10 to the 23rd. Um, and of course, that's going to be meters cubed. All right. So that's that's uh, that's how we're going to have. You know, that's how much volume you'd have to compress to get that to get that uh, that much you know that much space to turn into the density of of one point two. All right. So that's uh, number three. All right. So let me read uh, number four. It says. Um, Interstellar extinction is sometimes measured in magnitude per kiloparsec. So that, that's what I, what I wrote right here. Extinction is some number of in terms of magnitude per kiloparsec. Um, and so they, 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 they tell us that light from a star 15, uh, 1,500 parsecs away, which of course is 1.5 kiloparsecs, right? Okay. Um, is observed to be diminished by an intensity factor of... 20, okay, so, so, the, so it's a factor of 20 over and above the effect of the inverse square, the inverse square law. Um, what is the average interstellar extinction um, in magnitude per kiloparsec along the line of sight? Okay, so, so um, with this particular problem, you, the, the one thing to understand is, is the, it's the, um, uh, the, 
intensity of the light, um, so, so, so uh, the intensity of the light goes back down by a factor of 20. So that's um, ba basically just, just due to the gas and dust that's between us and the star that's, you know, 1.5 kiloparsecs away. So the, 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 the factor that we're thinking about um, would be the, in, the intensity 2 divided by intensity 1. And so that is, um, you know, the, the, the amount that this thing has, has de the, amount of, have, the amount that the light has decreased in intensity. So this, this um, I2 over I1 um, is, is given to us as a factor of 20. And, and why did I write it that way? Um, because there's a, there's a formula that says, and you, you got to look in the book uh, to find this, the magnitude um, is equal to, uh, the, the, I'm sorry, the ma magnitude difference. Uh, that's actually a good, let, let, me, let me write it that way. The magnitude difference, all right, so the magnitude, let me erase that part. Sorry. Um, now, oh, come on, erase. The magnitude difference, all right, so the difference, magnitude difference is equal to, all right, so this is the formula, um, it's 2.5, 2.5 times, 2.5 times the logarithm, um, you know, a lot of these things having to do with, in the, the, you know, the magnitude, the magnitude scale is a logarithmic scale, it's, it's, uh, it's just the way it is, all right, so it's the logarithm of I2 over I1. Which is what they gave us, right? That they gave us that that value is twenty. All right. So um, the magnitude difference is is simply going to equal two point five two point five times the log of twenty. All right. And so you just do this in your calculator. Make sure you're using the the base ten logarithm. And look, what is that equal to? Uh, let's see. So the um, 2.5 times the log of the log of 20 turns out to be um, a magnitude difference of 3.25. All right, so magnitude difference of 3.25. All right, um, and now now that's that's just the magnitude difference and it has nothing to do with the distance so far. So we we gotta we gotta we got to think about this in terms of magnitude really this is magnitude difference so that's probably a better way a better way of saying this this extinction the magnitude difference difference that's supposed to be an f difference um, per kiloparsec all right so they told us that the, this this star um, which you know is 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 uh, de the light is decreasing um, over and above, you know, because it's it's going the, the intensity of the light is going to decrease just due to the inverse square law, and so they're saying um, over and above the inverse square law, the, the the intensity of light is decreasing by a factor of twenty. So what that does, using this formula, um, you know, that tells us the magnitude is is. Uh, it is um, remember magnitude the, the, the greater the magnitude um, the dimmer the star right so the, the magnitude has gone from whatever it was to um, to an increase of uh, 3.25 which is really a decrease in brightness right so um, so what does that equal all right so let's uh, let's calculate that uh, in, in terms of uh, what it is? What is it per kiloparsec? All right. So, uh, remember the magnitude difference, mag difference, mag difference uh, is equal to three point two five. Three point. That's a two. Um, and then it's divided by. Well, in in our case, we know that this star is one point five kiloparsecs away. Right, and so so um, so we you know we divide we divide this this this, uh, this is this is basically becomes three point two five divided by one point five. All right, and of course that's the magnitude um, per kiloparsec or magnitude difference really per kiloparsec. Sorry, oh, 
that doesn't look very nice. All right, so anyhow, that comes out to be, you're just dividing 3.25, which you get from that formula, um, because they gave us the factor of 20 by, um, by uh, 1.5. And so the magnitude per, kil per kiloparsec is 2.17. So 2.17 um, is really the decrease in magnitude per kiloparsec. So each, every thousand parsecs, the, uh, the, the apparent magnitude would, would uh, increase by, the reason I say increase is because of course as the magnitude goes up, the dimmer the star is, right? The, the dimmer the apparent magnitude would be. Right? So it would go up by a factor of, of, of you know, 2.7. So like if it was, you know, a 5, uh, with, without without these inner without this uh, extinction right of, of gas and dust, um, if 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 the the star was a five, um, then then it would appear as a you know as a uh, as a seven point um, one seven right magnitude. Right. And so, you know, a five you could see in the night sky with the unaided eye, where uh, a 7.17 you definitely could not. All right, let's go to the next problem. All right, let's read this problem, uh, number five. It says, a beam of light shining through a dense molecular cloud uh, is diminished, by an intensi diminished in intensity by a factor of two for every five parsecs it travels. Um, by how by how many uh, magnitudes of light um, uh, from from the from the background stars uh, from from a background star dimmed if the total thickness of the cloud is 60, um, 60 parsecs okay so so, um, the, so first of all we have to calculate the magnitude difference right and so the magnitude difference is of course uh, two point five times the logarithm of Really, this is just the intensity factor, right? Um, and they gave us that, that that value is 2. And so um, the magnitude difference turns out to be, what did I get? Uh, 0.75. Okay, so this turns out to be point. So this turns out to be 0 0.75. All right, so, so that's, the, that's the magnitude difference. And then we got to continue this problem. All right, so we calculated the mag the magnitude difference of 0.75, um, you know, because this thing is dimming by a, a factor of two. Um, but they just tell us that it's for every five parsecs, and so it's good to know. Um, uh, it it would be good to know what what this magnitude difference would be, um, you know, uh, per kiloparsec. All right, so. All right. Um, I just noticed something in the uh, in the text um, in the in the problem. They say that it dims every five parsecs, but I th I'm very sure that they really mean that it dims every um, every five kiloparsecs. Okay, so that that's actually really important. So um, hey, let me get back to the problems and make sure like that I'm reading it correctly. All right. So this is uh, chapter eighteen. Uh, sorry interstellar medium and all right there we go yeah it's it says every five um, but but they really mean every five kiloparsecs all right so that's just a little bit of a mistake that that, that they did in the book uh, kiloparsecs um, so because otherwise it won't it will come out in a ridiculous uh, f fashion all right so so uh, if that's the case we can figure out the magnitude difference per kiloparsec all right, so, um, so the magnitude difference per kiloparsec is going to be 0 0.75, right? That's the magnitude difference divided by, in this case, 5, 5 kiloparsecs, all right? Um, and then they, then they tell us, okay, well, the cloud, um, you know, that, that's fine, uh, but the cloud is 60, uh, well, here, so, so this, this, of course, is equal to... Um, uh, 1.5 uh, magnitudes per kiloparsec. Okay, so, um, oops, uh, I mean, po 0.15. All right, so uh, 0.15 um, 